Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my colleagues and I are um, experts on German business policy and German culture. And we're here today to talk to you international business students at St. Edwards about doing business in Germany. To introduce my colleagues, we have uh, Mauricio Herrera, who's going to talk to you today about the government. Uh, Diego Zambrano is going to talk about geography of Germany. Uh, Mohamed Kamal is going to tell you about the economics. Uh, and lastly, Maria is going to tell you uh, a little bit about travel and tourism. Uh, my name is Dane Sohn. I'm going to tell you about uh, business <coughs> etiquette and the lifestyle in Germany. So, business etiquette. Um, punctuality is key. Uh, in the United States, if you're late to a meeting, I feel like our generation specifically, um, tardiness has become acceptable, a little bit more so than it should be. Uh, in Germany, if you're five minutes late to a meeting, you could have potentially blown an entire business deal. Uh, so being on time is a huge deal. Uh, dress code, if you see in the picture, uh, the man on the left is what you want to look like. <coughs> on the right, you're not going to show up with scuba gear, obviously, to a meeting. Um, in addition to that, not only for business-related uh, meetings, but uh, social, anything like socially, people dress a lot nicer uh, in Germany on average, or on, day, on a day-to-day -day basis. So you got UT over there, sorority girls in there, Nike shorts, oversized t-shirts. It doesn't happen in uh, Germany. When you hit 18, you start dressing like a lot nicer, and it's just how they live. Um, appointments, you don't ever want to drop in unannounced in Germany, it's just really disrespectful. You always want to have uh, an appointment set up well in advance. And hierarchy in Germany is very rigid. Um, you don't want to disrespect someone above you, just like <coughs> in the country. But a lot, of, a lot of people, or a lot of companies in the United States have an uh, open door policy, whereas if someone you think is doing their job incorrectly, you're allowed to call them out on it, even if you're underneath them. You're allowed to confront them and talk about it. Um, in Germany, that would be frowned upon. And if you're at an entry-level position, you will never talk down to someone above you. Um, we're going to talk about lifestyle. Um, Germany is very multicultural. Uh, just as the United States is a melting pot, Germany's, in a sense, the same way. Um, sense of humor, I'll come back to that. Language barriers, of course, they speak German primarily. Um, I visited Germany, I spent a summer there, and they can understand English. Uh, a lot of them, especially in like the tourist cities, we will talk about that. They, they understand English, but it's really, uh, I would recommend that you learn at least some German. I took two or three years of German before I went over there. Um, back to the sense of humor. Um, actually, two days ago, uh, on May 1st, the night of April 30th and uh, May 1st, they have this tradition, and it's called the May Tree. And every town gets a, a large tree trunk, and they trim, trim all the branches off of it, and they paint it different colors, and they decorate it. And it's like a big, uh, it's like a, a big celebration. The whole city takes part in it, and it's just like it's the center of the town. And on April 30th at night, different towns, like young men, will come and try and steal the tree trunk from different towns and bring it back to their own. And if your tree trunk gets stolen, your town collectively has to pay to get it back to the other city with barrels of beer. So everyone's getting drunk trying to steal these tree trunks, and it's just like a big German thing. And they also have a Oktoberfest. And so I talked to you about the lifestyle and business etiquette, and I'm going to ha uh, hand it off to Mauricio as you're going to talk about the government and uh, politics. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, my colleague said my name is Mauricio. And um, I want to talk about the government of Germany. So the government in Germany is parliamentary and um, has a democratic, uh, democratic in somehow emphasizes the protection of individual liberty and division of powers in federal structure. The chancellor, uh, whose name is Angela M., which is the <coughs> prime minister, gets the executive branch of uh, the, go the federal government and the duties of the president uh, are largely, largely ceremonial. The chancellor, as I said, uh, has the executive power. Uh, Germany has an independent federal judiciary cons consisting of constitutional court 
as a court of justice and courts with its uh, jurisdiction in administrative, financial labor, labor and social matters. Now I'm going to talk to you about uh, some political parties, which are five, Germany, and uh, the first one is the, Christ, the Christian Demo Democratic Union. They have adherents uh, among Catholics, Protestants, ruling, rural interest, and members of all economic classes. The second one is the Social Democratic Party. It is originally regarded the Marxist principles. Also, it's one of the oldest organized polit political parties in the world. The third one is the Free Demo Democratic Party, which supports the free trade, free trade and reducing the role of the state in economic policy. Um, <clears throat> the, the left party proposed uh, to replace the free market system, which are returned to socialist principles. And the last one is the Alliance 90 Greens, it was uh, founded in the 70s, which environmentalists organized politically as the Greens. Now I'm going to talk about the German unification. During the summer of 89, uh, rapid changes took place in Germany due to political pressures. Uh, the Berlin Wall was opened, Volkshammer eliminated uh, monopoly on power. Uh, yes, the SAD changed its name to the Party of Democratic uh, Socialism. Communities, communism system had been eliminated. Uh, the new Prime Minister share the power with the new democratic parties. Uh, Berlin, and uh, shortly after World War II, became the seat of Allied uh, Control Council, which was the governed Germany as a whole until the conclusion of peace settlement. The Soviets refused to, pers to particip participate in quadrup quadruple administration of Germany, then the Western Allies continue to exercise its uh, supreme authority. Now I'm going to turn it to uh, Marina, who's going to talk about uh, tourism in Germany. Thank you. As you said, my name is Marina. Um, okay, according to the Travel and Tourism Com Competitiveness Report, Germany is rated as one of the safest travel destinations in the world. It is also the fifth most visited country in Europe with a total of 369.6 million overnight stays per year. Um, Germany is home to many numerous uh, festivals, parades, and fairs that are attended by millions of people uh, from all around the globe. Some of these include Oktoberfest, which I'm sure many of you are well aware of. It's held in Munich during September and October, and on average, six million people attend this uh, annually. There's also a uh, Cannstetter Volksfest, which is in Stuttgart, which is also in September and October, and 4.2 million people attend this annually. And then there's the largest fair on the Rhine in Dusseldorf, which is held in July, and on average, 4 million people attend this festival. Um, the German Tourism Association publishes statistics on the most visited landmarks. The Cologne Cathedral is Germany's most visited landmark with 6 million visitors annually. And second and third place are Reichstag building in Berlin and the Hof Brauhaus in Munich. More than 30% of Germans spend their holidays in their own country. With 133 million foreign visitors, Germany is ranked seventh most visited country worldwide. Um, in 2010, 27.2 billion euros were spent on travel and tourism alone, which was equivalent to 3.2% of Germany's GNP. <clears throat> in terms of overnight stays, travel to the 12 largest cities in Germany more than doubled between the years of 1995 and 2005. Um, this increase is due to the growth of cultural tourism, often because of educational or business traveling. Uh, the top five most visited cities are, in first place, Berlin, which had 17.8 million overnight stays in 2010, uh, Munich with 9.8 million overnight stays, 
Hamburg with 7.7 .7 million, Frankfurt with 5.4 million, and Cologne with 4.3 million. Um, things to do and things that Germany has to offer is um, in the winter they offer skiing, cross country skiing, snowboarding, bobsledding. Um, <coughs> you can also visit the, uh, the most large cities with um, museums and the food that they have to offer and the nightlife. And there's also hiking in the most well-preserved forest um, almost around the world. And um, as for the quality of life, <coughs> Germany has the world's highest level of education, technological development, and economic productivity. Uh, as you can see on the slide, Bayern is a was named one of the ten top largest companies in Germany in 2010 by the Forbes list. Um, since the end of World War II, the number of youth entering universities has more than tripled, and the trade and technological schools of the Federal Republic of Germany are among the world's best. Germany is broadly a middle-class society, um, and their government supply, er, provides a generous social welfare system uh, that includes universal Medicare, um, unemployment compensation, and other social needs. Um, it is estimated that the population of Germany will decline from its current 81 million to around 70 million by the year 2050. This is due to the um, declining, declining age. Um, it will reduce the workforce by 6 million people by the year 2030, and this threatens to become a constraining factor for the Germany's prosperity and growth. I am now going to hand it over to Mohammed, who's going to talk about Germany's economics. As Dan said, my name is Mohammed, and I'm going to talk about Germany's <coughs> uh, Germany is the fifth largest economy in the world and the largest economy in the Eurozone. It depends heavily on its exports to drive the economy and with a strong network of trade relationships between, amongst all the major trading countries all over the world. Its strongest commodities are automobiles. Germany's main imports are machinery, vehicles, chemicals, and food, and textiles, with a total of 1.12 trillion US dollars. Their main exports are vehicles, also vehicles, machinery, chemicals, and textiles, with a total value of 1.33 million trillion US dollars. Their main partners are the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, China, France, and the United States. Now I'll be talking about their needs. <coughs> Following a recent recovery from the recession, growth has slowed and the current economic situation is facing a multitude of challenges. On the structural side, however, Germany has made major progress, notably in the labor market. However, this sh Germany should start focusing on strengthening the domestic demand, where they should focus on improving competition, enhancing framework, and conditions for investment and innovation in Germany's domestic sectors, and also raise labor and growth where they should focus on avoiding skill shortages by continued reforms of education and training systems, and aiming at the high participation in non-life learning. Also, the Federal Statistics Office in West Baden said that Germany has a strong domestic economy, which is fueled by investments and construction and the rise of exports. However, their gross domestic product is around 3.5 trillion US dollars, which is low for a company of Germany's stature. However, their new economics minister, Philip Rosler, said that Germany is the engine of growth among the industrial nations and not just in Europe. Here's a graph of Germany's projected labor input, if nothing is done. And as you can see, there is a dramatically dramatic decline over the labor force. I basically talked about the Germany's economy, uh, their imports and exports, and their needs. 
Now I'll be handing it off to Diego, who is going to talk about the GR. All right, so as Mohammed said, my name is Diego Zambrano, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the geography and renewable energy in Germany. Uh, Germany is located in Central Europe, and it stretches from the Alps to the Baltic Sea in the northeast part of the country. It covers a territory of 357,000 uh, square kilometers, and to get that into perspective, that's about half the size of Texas. Uh, it's neighboring states, it has nine ne neighbors, second only to Russia. And its largest cities include Berlin with uh, 3.4 million inhabitants, Hamburg with 1.7, and Munich with 1.3. Uh, the physical geography, the northern part of the country, um, lies under the northern European PM plain, as you can see in green in our map. And then moving south from that, you can see features that are um, that are hilly, and that's where the southern part of Germany forms, and that was all formed during the volcanic uh, activities during the last ice age. Um, in the south, to the east, we can see the Bavarian forest that is along the border uh, with Bavaria and the Czech Republic, and in the south west part of the country you can see the Black Forest and that is within, bordering with France. Now a little bit about the, uh, the climate in the country. Uh, it is temperate and marine with cloudy uh, wet winters and summers with the south with an occasional warm front. Uh, the northwest part of the country is extremely oceanic and rain falls year round. Uh, something, uh, a little bit uh, on the human geography. As Mohammed said, I think, uh, it's the, the largest country in the European Union with 81.8 million inhabitants uh, as of January 2010. And it is the 15th largest. Um, uh, got that part. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the renewable energy aspect of the country, which is something that has influenced the country greatly in economics. Uh, the most uh, prevalent uh, renewable energy in the country is wind power with over 40%. Uh, wind power is, <coughs> Germany is the third largest user of wind power in the world. And the percentage of increase in renewable energy in Germany since 2000, it was 6.3%. Uh, and in 2000, 2011, it is now more than 20% of the country's electrical use. Uh, geothermal power is something that has been growing in the country as well. It is a new technology, and they're finding different places in the country to locate that. And doing the geography of the map, they have multiple places to uh, to exploit this power, but right now it's not at, <coughs> at a high level. Uh, hydroelectricity is also very prevalent, and Germany's renewable energy <coughs> sector is the most, among the most innovative uh, worldwide, and has lots of companies that are uh, pioneering this new technology. All right, now to wrap things up, uh, my partner Dane covered business etiquette and lifestyle. Mauricio covered uh, the political aspects of the, com of the country. Uh, Marina covered tourism and the quality of life. Mohammed co covered import and exports. And I covered the geography of the renewable energy of the country. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions?